We'll find it. We'll find a middle ground. We'll compromise. Mm -hmm. And I know the bighorn sheep will work its way into your heart. <laughs> sure. <laughs> My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. So we've reached the point in the project where we have to talk about this mural. So something has happened to me over the last year in that I have become quite attached to this mural. This bighorn sheep is my friend. And, but this is also really valuable cabinetry space for our stateroom. So we're here to talk about the use of this space. Matt, you want to make your argument? How I envision it is there would be a little like settee area, just like really short little settee area with uh, some cushions on one side, maybe taking up like between half and two thirds of this space, and then a hanging locker taking up the rest of it. So like it would be like a hanging locker from here to here, and all that would be hanging locker for you to for us to hang stuff and then drawers would be underneath here and then we could hang out have like a nice little reading nook right here and a window in the hole right here. Matt, what about the bighorn sheep? I am not attached to any of this. Um, what if we had the, the hanging locker on this side and the settee area here so that we can still see the glory of the bighorn sheep. Okay, but there's going to be a window right above it. Is that okay? Or is, is it just the sheep that you're attached to? I think I'm attached to the whole thing, but especially the sheep. So It's already contaminated by this uh, thing. That's okay. It adds to the charm. Well, I have to get rid of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Obviously, we would touch up this mural. Um, we would find an artist who could touch it up for us. But... Um, I think I'm okay with the window here. Would you be okay with the hanging locker here and the settee here? Mm-hmm. And then this would be kind of like a settee with cushions, like reading nook kind of place. Mm -hmm. Do you like that? Okay. Or would you rather it, we could have it, yeah. We could rather have it what? Like be all... Or like have two hanging lockers, one on both either side, and then have like a smaller nook in the middle. But then, my friend, the bighorn sheep. So if we have a hanging locker here, you're not going to get rid of the mural, right? Like you would just, it would be covered, but preserved. Is that right? Mostly. Okay. And don't forget that the, if we're having a little reading nook here, that's going to be like cushions up against here. This is going to be covered as well, okay. like a lot of it. Like you might just see the head of it, of the sheep. So to explain a little bit, I do, this mural has grown on me. It feels like a part of the character of Duracell, part of its history. And um, I also like it. I think it's cheerful. And when we're out doing ocean crossings and I'm dreaming of land, I can gaze at the bighorn sheep and the mountains. But let us know what you think. This has been kind of a fun little debate between Matt and me. He's not as nostalgic about the mural. Um, let us know what you think or if you have any creative ideas for how we could preserve and display the mural, but also have cabinetry and space in our stateroom. Whose side are you on? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not. We're all a team, but you can let us know your thoughts. Okay. It's actually a mystery who painted these murals. Here's what we know. Mike Plant's fiance painted the albatross, and she herself confirmed that. But the others? We asked Plant's nephew, who made a documentary about Plant, and he said that a friend of Plant's named Sergey painted them. As it turns out, 
Sergei had been watching our channel and read an article I wrote that said he painted the murals. Sergei emailed us, though, and said that he did not paint them. He suggested that John, who bought Duracell from Plant, may have. But we confirmed with John that the murals were in the boat when he bought it from Plant. So we don't know who painted them. So this winter we're going to be working on the interior. I'm going to be uh, mocking everything up as I go through the interior before I build it. Obviously I've drawn it all and not super detailed, but Marcus in Greece is helping me draw it in 3D and we're excited to show that to you when it's done. Uh, but for now what I'm doing is uh, building everything with just some MDF board and just to see how it looks, see how it feels. We started with the stateroom. I first templated up the floorboard. I needed to lower the sole a couple inches to get a little more comfortable headroom. Before I get the templating going, I use my laser level to draw a plane for where I need the part to go. Then I hot glue blocks to the underside of the line and then begin to make the shape. I use two and a half inch door skin strips that are easily cut with a razor blade to go around the perimeter of the area. I take the template to the shop and trace and cut out the part. It's usually pretty close but hardly ever perfect. A hammer makes it fit. The design of the layout is a game of inches. Moving one part a small distance one direction can make a huge difference. In the case of the bed, the higher it is, the larger the bed can be, and then more storage underneath but too high and there's not enough headroom, and it's higher to climb onto. I adjusted the height a few times before finding where I liked it. Yes, this state room is quite small, and we like it that way. For the hanging locker, I used my laser level to find the line along the hole to build the template. The boat is level both fore and aft and athwart ship, so using the laser level makes it easy to draw lines and keep things square. I'm gonna give you a tour of the stateroom. We're up here in the state in the V-Birth, basically. This is the port side, and I'm sitting on this, it was like a storage bench that was in the boat originally, and I'm going to keep it and incorporate it into our storage area in the stateroom. And so on the face here, I'm gonna install a bunch of drawers for putting clothes and everything. This space where I'm sitting will be kind of a little couch that'll be in our stateroom. So if one of us wants to come in and get some quiet time up in the up in the V berth, close the door and work or something in here, there'll be a nice space for it. I'm gonna put windows in the boat. There'll be a window on this side and on the starboard side, and there'll be more windows aft. And then this is the hang locker. So we don't have a lot of stuff. We're trying to Keep our stuff to a minimum so we figured just one hanging locker will be enough there'll be a couple more drawers in here and there will also be more storage space under the bed more drawers under the bed so we feel that this will be enough storage for us up in the stateroom and then of course there's the sheep Diani is keen to keep the sheep and obviously we'll cut this off and the sh the, we're going to get somebody to touch it up for us but uh, one problem will be that there are going to be cushions here, so the cushions might cover up the sheep a little bit, but we'll figure out that a little bit later. We don't have to have cushions. Yes, well, there's no point in having this well, nice... Well, we could just have like a cushion to sit on, but we don't need like back cushions. Sure, we do. Hmm. Yep. 
Okay, well, we'll just find see-through cushions. See-through cushions? Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyway, it's uh, we're really happy with how this is turning out so far. Okay, so now I'm on the starboard side of the stateroom. Over there is the hanging locker. This where I'm sitting will be the bed. And so this level right here, this will be the bottom of the mattress. And then there'll be slats that come across. And so you can see, so the mattress will basically be this high. It'll be a pretty high mattress. It'll be plenty big for us. On the face of this wall, that is the edge of the bed, will have drawers in it. So there'll be tons of storage space for clothes. This area will be storage space for stuff that we don't need very often. So we'll lift up the, lift up the mattress and put stuff underneath here. And same with this space under here. And then there'll be like a little tiny little like nightstand right here with the little bookshelf underneath it. Again, there'll be a window up here, a hatch in the roof, and probably another shelf on this side. So then the next thing to mock up is the workbench. So I had a really hard time figuring out what I was going to do with this space. I had a few ideas, but once I thought of doing a workbench, it was pretty obvious that that's what needed to happen right here. So what it's going to be is just this nice big counter space. It'll be nice and sturdy. It'll be like butcher block to do all kinds of projects on. There'll be big cabinets with drawers in them to put tools and supplies and whatever I need. I'm going to put cubbies across the top here for more to hold more stuff, uh, work stuff. So Yanni and I can both do projects on this table. It is one of the huge advantages of getting to build my own boat is like you don't find work spaces like this on any old production boat. So I'm really excited about this and I'm excited to get to work on it. Notice first that these two cabinets are different sizes. This one sticks further inward than this one. And that's because the, the hole is tapering forward. And so I wanted the cabinet to be an equal width all the way forward. And so 
it's just kind of the natural shape of this area. So this one could not stick out as far as that one or else it would stick out further than the counter. And so I also didn't want to reach really far under the counter to be able to pull one of these drawers out. So that's why I made this one a little bit further out. It's a little awkward look looking, but I don't think it looks bad. This space under here will be kind of useless, but uh, I think it's okay and I'm curious to know what you think. Last thing you'll notice is that this sticks out right here. So everything leads into the next thing in the boat. So where these ring frames are, we're not gonna leave them this shape. We're gonna leave them here, but we're actually going to, ex we're gonna build a wall that comes up. That basically extends from this plane aft to that uh, aft bulkhead. And this will all become cabinet space. So lots of lo like lockers, doors, cubbies, all kinds of space. So this will not be sticking out like this and be kind of a hip jammer as you could imagine walking down the hallway right here. It's very exciting to kind of start building this thing and then this kind of leads into the next part of the boat and it's all kind of starting very early to take shape. So very, very exciting. Okay, we are at the airport. We are on our way to go see family for Thanksgiving. Uh, so we're not gonna do a video next week. Uh, but we are excited to uh, get back into boat work in two weeks time. So thank you again very much for watching. We'll see you in a couple weeks.